What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about seven, seven things that can make you a fantastic sparring partner. We should all be thriving to achieve this and hoping that everybody around us is wanting to do these things as well. It is really as simple as this. If you're not a good sparring partner, not almost fantastic, people are gonna stop wanting to do rounds with you. And you're not gonna get any better. People are gonna avoid you. They're gonna be like, no, let's find somebody else. You want to make sure you're being a good sparring partner to help everybody around you grow and to make sure you're not hurting other people. So all the points I list out today, if you are not doing all of them, there is room for improvement. Number one. Stop, stop aiming for the jaw or the nose. You can easily go up to the forehead. What is this gonna do? When you hit them in the forehead, there's gonna be less damage. There's less likelihood of breaking a nose, having people leave being, oh, I'm gushing with blood, having a bent nose, less likelihood of knocking somebody down. When you knock somebody down, a lot of times it comes off the jaw. I've had times before where I've made mistakes, like stepped in, jabbed, caught somebody right there and all of a sudden they're down. Like, oh shoot. I started years ago aiming for the forehead. The only downside of this is that you have to make sure you don't do that in the fights. So my recommendation would be aim high, aim high. When you do your pad work, aim at the correct height and then have somebody just move around with you where you just very gently aim for the jaw, just so you're remembering that that is my actual target and I don't always want to put the shots up there. But your sparring partner will appreciate it if you hit them here instead of there or there. Number two that's going to help make you a fantastic sparring partner, if you are the more skilled individual, leave openings for your partner. I'm not saying like, Wah! but leave little spots. Don't you know, and develop the perfect guard and make it so they cannot land anything. You want to help them learn that openings are usually there with people of their own skill level and they have to look for them. They have to search for them. And if you do that, you're gonna help them grow. I always do this. Doesn't matter who I'm sparring with, unless they're the same skill level as me or above. That doesn't happen too often, but I'm always leaving little spots, little Easter eggs. Just like that. They might not notice it, but I do it for a second. Or I'll just go like this and see what they do. And that's going to help your partner's skill level develop. But the next point is almost the polar opposite to that. Don't condescend them. Still make it challenging. Even when I spar with little kids, I don't make it easy on them. I don't just go, oh, pat them on the head and like, okay, just hit me in the body. Go, go, go. They don't like that. People want to be challenged. They don't want to be coddled. And if you go in and you make it far too easy, they're gonna be like, ah, that was just annoying. You're just annoying me. So still, you leave openings, like I said before, but you make it challenging because you're still touching them, you're still catching, you're still throwing them once in a while. You're making it difficult, but you're just giving them little goodies here and there. But remember, people want the challenge. Give it to them. The next tip to be a fantastic sparring partner is do not take advantage of your size, whether that be height, or actual weight. If you're doing that, you're not creating a level playing field. I need to recognize when I go against somebody who's 145 pounds walking around, that I might have 10, 15, 20% more power than them. And if I try and force my way in and use my muscle or my overall size, it's gonna be very difficult for them to get an even round happening. So we wanna make sure we don't do that. If I'm sparring with somebody, let's say a female, who's a, I think I did some boxing rounds about six months ago with somebody who is a pro fighter and I think she was like 110 pounds, fight weight. We did great rounds, but obviously if I stay up here, I'm not being a very good sparring partner for her. Nobody she fights is gonna be up there. So I just lowered my base and I was just flying in here with her, staying tight, not taking advantage of my long arms. If you can do that, people are gonna appreciate you because you're making things a little bit more equal to what they will actually be experiencing in the ring when they fight. Tip number five, control your sweeps. That actually means a number of things. So if I catch and I have somebody's leg, I need to make sure, number one, I'm not targeting joints. I don't wanna hit them in the knee where I'm gonna have them fly up in the air 
but I already tweaked out that, that limb. I wanna make sure I'm thinking about that. I also wanna make sure that I don't put them up in the air and on their back where they get the wind knocked out of them or when they land on their head and get concussed from me throwing them. There are many ways you can hurt somebody when you sweep them, but it is also one of the best ways to challenge somebody and make them tired because they continually have to fall down, get up, fall down, get up. So I'm not saying stop them, I'm just saying be cautious with them, be safe, and make sure you're throwing them in an appropriate way. If you're brand new and you don't know how to do it by gracefully placing somebody down, maybe it's not the right technique for you yet to be utilizing. The next thing which is so hard to get over is you don't wanna be a sparring partner. When you get hit, you have to get it back. It's like, oh, he just hit me. I have to hit him just as hard back. Or he just winded me to the body, now I'm gonna come and try and club him in the body. We want to stop doing that. Number one, you don't wanna do that in the fight in that way. Yes, you can get hit and be like, oh, okay, I need to get that back. But you don't wanna run at them and be like, I'm getting you now. I have to get that back at this exact moment. That's bad. That's when people get knocked out. So if you do get hit and you decide, oh, I wanna tag this guy back, not super hard, but I wanna get him back, take your time. Give it 20, 30 seconds, but also don't get emotional about it because if you get emotional and you go, oh, he just tagged me, now I'm gonna hit him back just as hard. Now we're ending up in that situation where sparring elevates over and over and over. He wants to get me back, I wanna get him back, and all of a sudden the rounds have gone from 20, 30% up to full-blown fighting. We don't want that, that's not being a good sparring partner, and in order to eliminate it, you just have to sometimes remove the ego, People appreciate it. Somebody taps me hard, and I'm like, ooh, he got me. I'm just like, okay. Touch gloves, and we get back to normal. I'm not thinking, oh, this guy's going down now. Or I used to think that a lot when I was younger. Now I think I can put my ego aside and be a little bit better of a sparring partner. And the last thing which you wanna be on point with to be a fantastic sparring partner is to make sure if you see an injury which you caused, you don't continually go after it. For example, if I come in and I tag somebody to the body and I hit, <clears throat> I could easily go after that area again. I could probably put them down. But if I don't wanna be a jerk, I'll switch it up. I'll move to a new position. I'll go, ooh, you know what? That liver, it's not a target that I can use for the next 20, 30 seconds. I need to let them have a little break. If you start chopping somebody's leg down and you see them, oh, getting like that, switch up legs or go up high. If you see an injury which you caused, pull away from it, give them a break, and open up your arsenal to other areas so that when they walk out of the gym, they're walking out happy and not damaged. They're not walking home like this because you kicked this leg 50 times because they didn't check any of them. Why are you doing that? You land 10 of them, you're like, well, yeah, I can land at will. I know that. Why would I continue kicking? Let's move on and let's make it a little bit more challenging for me and use a technique which I know I can't land repeatedly. These are all fantastic tips which your sparring partners are going to appreciate. Everybody in the gym is gonna to want to spar with you. You're gonna get more rounds. You're gonna have more fun. Your longevity is going to be that much more because you're not doing these stupid rounds where you're causing injuries or getting injured, all the stuff that comes from rounds with egos. Be a good sparring partner, guys. If you enjoyed the episode, please give it a like. If you have not already, join the channel and get subscribed. Train hard, spar properly, and I'll see you back here soon for another video.